Hello, and welcome to the John Ark Show. Today's episode is called Vending Machine Funerals. We're also going to answer some viewer questions. Before we begin, I want to encourage you to subscribe, like, comment, and follow us. Uh, we're going to have a lot of great celebrity interviews coming up, so I encourage you to click on the notification bell so you can be notified every time we upload a new episode. I'd also like to tell you about a service called HollywoodIsCalling.com. It allows you to purchase live phone calls with more than 100 celebrities. A live 15-second call is $19.95, and a live 30-second call is $29.95. So give it a try. HollywoodIsCalling.com. Now, let's get started. Here's our first viewer question. Do you believe that expensive funerals, as we've known them over the last few decades, will no longer be affordable for most families? Uh, I'm seeing a disturbing rise in the number of low-income families and middle-class families who can't even claim their deceased loved ones from the morgue anymore. The reason is that they can't even afford to buy a casket, bury the body, or to even cremate their loved ones. A lot of families are more devastated by their inability to take care of a, a deceased loved one um, than they are by the actual death of that loved one. It's amazing how traumatic this can be for people. A lot of middle-class families can no longer afford a funeral uh, either, so many of them are just cremating the remains of their loved ones and keeping them in an urn at their homes. I think someone with very deep pockets like Wall Street or Silicon Valley needs to develop a very low cost alternative for people with very little money so they can give their deceased loved ones a more affordable service. You know, and maybe it's not Silicon Valley, maybe it's not Wall Street, maybe it's one of the big box retailers, maybe Walmart, maybe Costco can come up with a solution. Um, I think we're approaching a point now where most people won't be able to afford more than a couple of hundred dollars to pay for an alternative funeral service or a cremation of some sort uh, that is still respectful, but that most people will be able to afford. Some people are referring to these, as, uh, to these ultra low cost funerals as uh, vending machine funerals, which is a little lacking in dignity and it's not too respectful. Um, whatever they decide to call them, there is clearly a need for a low cost option of some sort. Next question. People really miss going to concerts. When do you think the concert business will get reactivated again so people can start going to see their favorite bands or artists? Well, I think we're going to start seeing concerts again in late 2021 or early 2022. Everybody loves music and looks forward to enjoying it again year round. It's not just the fans, the music business and the entertainers themselves are very dependent on the revenue from the concert tours they do. So there is a lot of pressure on them to resume touring so they can pay their bills. Next question. What do you think about American retirees moving abroad to stretch their retirement income? Do you think that makes sense? And is it realistic? Well, there are countless YouTube channels featuring testimonials of real life Americans who have moved around to stretch their income and improve the quality of their lives. Not only do I think it's possible, but I believe that leaving America and living abroad is the only way for some of these poor people. Uh, things were so difficult for some of them financially in America uh, that they had to regularly decide, you know, between buying groceries or buying their, you know, life-sustaining medicine at the end of the month. That's how desperate things were. Now, when you move abroad, a number of foreign countries have very reasonable and affordable healthcare coverage. And for some American retirees, it was the only thing keeping them uh, above ground. There are major differences in, 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 in the cultural approaches of, of some foreign countries as well. In America, there are literally millions of retirees who are extremely lonely because they simply can't afford to have a spouse or a girlfriend. Now, in many overseas countries, that is not the case, as women there are very modest and very eager to partner with an American living in their country. They treat them really well, and these couples, they tend to be really ha uh, happy. 
Everyone knows that lonely people don't live as long as happy people who are in a relationship. So that is another really good reason to consider moving abroad if you need to do so financially. The one thing you need to do is you need to put a lot of time and energy into researching what country you may want to relocate to. You have to research the financial aspects of it, the legal aspects of it, the cultural aspects of it. What's the crime rate over there like? What's the cost of living over there like? What are the laws and regulations like? Uh, then when you decide you want to give it a try and move to that, that country, uh, whatever you do, don't buy a house when you get there. Just rent a place for a year uh, or even for six months so you can uh, always return back to the U.S. if things don't work out well. Don't burn any bridges. Make sure you have a place in the U.S. to come back to and that you keep your, uh, your familial support network in America fully informed of where you're going, what you're doing, and, uh, and if you're staying or coming back. Make sure you pick a place with great internet connection because chances are you will need to use Skype or Zoom or WhatsApp or FaceTime to talk to and, and video visit with your family and friends on a regular basis. Next question. We hear that Warner Media may sell CNN. What do you think will happen? Well, I think it's possible. They're valuing CNN at $5.6 billion. Up until recently, CNN has had terrible ratings, though that has improved lately. The problem that Warner Media has with CNN is Warner is moving everything to streaming apps and CNN doesn't really align itself well with a plan like that. They are a cable channel that has always been sold as part of a bundle, uh, but that's not the way the industry is moving. Everything is moving towards streaming apps. There is a lot of debt involved. So I'm not sure what they'll do, but I do know this, and that is CNN is a huge brand, a brand name, and that it, that's really well known around the world. So it's only a matter of time before someone buys it or pumps money into the current version of it to keep it going. I've even heard, ver I've even heard rumors that Jeff Bezos of Amazon is, uh, is thinking of buying it, but who knows? Next question. What's going on with the actor Shia LeBeau? Will he get dropped and canceled by, uh, by his Hollywood agencies because of his recent uh, because of the recent disclosures against him? I don't know. He is definitely his own worst enemy, but to uh, but to my knowledge, they haven't dropped him or canceled him yet. Maybe they felt uh, that they can still make a lot of money with him. Who knows? My gut tells me that if he keeps getting into trouble. Uh, the way he has been, then it's only a matter of time before he gets canceled. Now, once that happens, then he may start uh, taking things a little bit more seriously. But you never know. Hollywood is an industry um, that has a brilliant way of getting actors to, to destroy themselves over time. It never ceases to amaze me how many actors just self-destruct intentionally. Um, so who knows? Next question. Why are there so many uh, garbage, unwatchable movies on many of the streaming apps? Well, the first reason for that is that it is extremely difficult to make a great movie. You can spend millions of dollars writing, producing, directing, and polishing a movie only to find out once uh, that you see the final version that it's terrible. Uh, it's really difficult to make an average movie, let alone a great movie, just look at all the movie sequels that were directed by the same director who made the original movie and see how many of those uh, sequels are still terrible. Same actors, same directors, all getting to try again, and still they produce a bomb. It's as though the stars themselves must align to create a great movie. Now, having said that, I want to thank our viewers for watching and tell you that we're going to be having more great celebrity interviews and more breaking news stories coming up in the future. So we want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell so you can get notified every time we post a new story. Thank you again.